I promise you, it will only take you about five minutes to learn how to create a character for the Cypher system. So grab your favorite drink and listen up. Before we do this, little disclaimer, I'll be only using examples from the core Cypher system rulebook and I will be mostly using examples for fantasy because I believe that is a genre most people, including myself, are familiar with. Another quick disclaimer, I'm going to assume that you've watched my first video where I take 5 minutes of your time to explain the Cypher system to you because there is some really important information in that video. So make sure to click it, watch it and then come back and watch this video. The easiest way to start creating a character for the Cypher system is by filling in your character sentence on the top left left of your character sheet, which always goes like this. Your character's name is a blank blank who blanks. For example, Mr. Tarosk is a handsome YouTuber who talks about the cipher system. So let's say our character's name is Juicy Jane. All we need for her is a descriptor, a type and a focus. The easiest thing to start with is the type, because in a very basic sense that's kind of like your class in 5th edition and Pathfinder, although you will quickly find that this system is way more open and everything is combinable with everything. In the basic rulebook there are 4 types to choose from, the warrior, the adept, the speaker and the explorer. For the sake of this video we're going to make Juicy Jane a warrior, so right now Juicy Jane is a blank warrior who blanks. In order to flesh her out more we'll need a a descriptor. Although there is many, many descriptors to choose from, let's make her impulsive. So now Juicy Jane is an impulsive warrior who blanks. To make matters worse, there's even more foci to choose from, but we need one to complete our character sentence. I went with would rather be reading. So now Juicy Jane is an impulsive warrior who'd rather be reading. I just want to quickly say that you can create your character sentence and then build your character concept around that, or you can build your character concept and then build a character sentence that fits it. So all we need to do now is fill in our character sheet and in order to do that we go to the stuff we've chosen before, take the stuff and put it on our character sheet. Like before the easiest thing to start with is your type. So let's look at the warrior. Most information can be found with your type. For example a tier 1 warrior like Juicy Jane has an effort level of 1. She has 10 might, 10 speed and 8 intellect and she can divide 6 more points among those as she pleases. I've chosen to put 2 in each stat to kind of round her out and make her somewhat more clever because she would rather be reading. So now she has a pool of 12 might, a pool of 12 speed and a pool of 10 intellect. Also a warrior can choose to have one edge in either speed or might. Again, I have chosen to make her somewhat more agile then she is strong. Then there is a list of powers to choose from and a warrior can choose four powers from that list. I went with bash, trained without armor, quick throw and swipe. All of the explanations of those powers are of course in the book. For the sake of this guide I don't want to go too deep into the equipment because you need to figure that out for yourself but I went with uh, a big ass sword, a somewhat big ass shield and spiked balls to throw. Then we take a look at the descriptor and since I went with impulsive it gives me plus 2 to my speed pool bringing it all the way up to 14. Also I am trained in initiative actions, I am trained in speed defense actions and to balance all of that out I have an inability in willpower, patience and discipline tasks. Then let's look at our focus and since I've chosen would rather be reading I actually get a tier 1 A power that is called knowledge is power which gives me the ability to be trained in two non-combat skills of my choosing. And because Juicy Jane always knows where and when she is I went with cartography and horology. Also, it is worth stating that unlike other tabletop RPGs like 5th edition or Pathfinder, the skill list is not set in stone. As a matter of fact, you can fill it in yourself with words that make sense for you. You can also work with your game master to come up with skills that make sense for your character and if your game master allows it you can add that to your skill list. A fun addition to that is also coming up with another inability just for role playing purposes. Maybe your character is really bad at swimming for some reason. And that is basically it, that is a cypher character for you, you can now sit down and play the game with your own character. Now there's a few details that I left out, your type also gives you the information about how many magic items or cyphers you can carry at one time, it also gives you information about starting equipment and then there is the optional rule of flavor which your game master might or might not use. I use it. Now I of course didn't talk about the flavor of your character, the background, why they became an adventurer, who they are and why they have the character sentence that they have. That is of course really important but that is completely up to you. The second really important thing you should always do is subscribe to this YouTube channel. Ah, I promised five minutes so you'll get five minutes.